Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is no way. No way. Thank you, Jesus, to live. Apart from Jesus, it is in him that we live and move and have our being. And he said, I am the way. I'm the way. I'm the way to live. I'm the way to life. Amen. There is no way to live without Jesus. Father, we thank you for life more abundantly. Thank you for your precious word. Your word that sustains us, gives us illumination, gives us enlightenment. Lord, it leads us and guides us into all truth because your word is truth. And you declared in your word, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. So we thank you for your word that you sent down from heaven. Lord, let it abide deep within our hearts. Let it overflow. Let it keep our hearts and minds, guard us, our thoughts, our ways, our activities, oh God. Let them be rooted, led by the word of the living God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. So we thank you today. Bless and we shall be blessed. Keep and we shall be kept. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Bless your name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 16, but hold your place there, and I want you to turn back to Romans chapter 12 for just a moment. This, amen, what we're going to see today is urgent. This is urgent. Amen. There's a sense of urgency about salvation, period. Amen. Now is the accepted. Now. In this letter of Romans address to the called of Jesus Christ, to the beloved of God. Amen. Those, the Bible says, who are called to be saints. Amen. This letter, amen, that the Apostle Paul wrote is loaded with so much. Amen. So much theology. Amen. So much information. Amen. That it has been considered by many, and I said this at the outset, to be as a culminating kind of constitution. Amen. A complete, amen, compendium of Christianity. If you had no other book than the book of Romans, it's enough for you to be saved by. It's enough. It's more than enough. It's enough for you to be saved by, and it's enough for you, for you to, be, to live by. Amen. It is packed. I mean, it is chock full of. Amen. All kinds of, amen, instructions, information, amen, revelation, amen. And the, the, the theology and the doctrine that's contained in this book, it is, in this letter, rather, it is so vast, amen, that the Apostle Paul himself, who received the revelation from God, he himself, if, if you remember in the end of chapter 11, amen, he said these words, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and and knowledge of God, how unsearchable, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. He said, for who has known the mind of the Lord? For who has been his counselor? Amen. The Bible teaches us also that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us, the Bible says, to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts 
and that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? Right here in this. Everybody in heaven is going to be living righteous. Hello? There's no sin there. There's no disobedience there. There's no defiance there. Amen. No corruption there. No death there. No rebellion there. Everybody, God wants us to live holy and righteous right here. In this present world. Amen. All of our salvation, as the Apostle Paul made crystal clear, amen, right here in this letter of Romans also, is based upon, amen, what God has done for us. Amen. In Christ Jesus, what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. It is not of works, he reminds us, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. Amen. That's God's grace to man. Amen. It's the gift of God. However, there are certainly, as we see in this letter, practical things that the apostle, amen, expounds to us that calls for our participation. Amen. Cooperation. That's what he's calling for. Our cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Now that you have the Holy Spirit, we are called to cooperate. Before you had the Holy Spirit, you ain't thinking about cooperating. That's what the Bible teaches. Romans chapter 6. Amen. You were free from righteousness when you were a servant of sin. You ain't thinking about doing what's right. Amen. You didn't have the ability to do what is right. But now that you are saved, you are now called to participate. In Romans chapter 12, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, what? By the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. This is only reasonable. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Re now you got a new mind. If any man be in Christ, 1 Corinthians 5, 17, I believe it is. He is a new, 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 amen. The old is, and all things become, oh, we go, oh, new birth. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. We're not to be conformed to this world any longer, but be transformed, he says, by the renewing your, of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. For I say, he says in verse 3, through the grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly, oh, he's calling for our participation and cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think how? Soberly. Soberly. According as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And then go down to verse number 9, Romans 12. He tells us, look at, look at all of these things, at these, these admonitions, amen, for the people of God. To number one, let love be without hypocrisy. The hypocrisy or this. I'm reading from the King James, so you got it there. Without dissimulation or hypocrisy, no respect of persons. Amen. Then he says, abhor that which is evil, but cleave to that which is what? Good. Be kind. These are things he's calling for you and I to do. Yes, Amen. The Holy Spirit is working in us, but you have to cooperate. Yes, right. I have to cooperate. Amen. Amen. Be kindly affection one to another with what? Brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business. You can be lazy if you want to be lazy. You can be lazy if you want to be lazy. Amen. But he says not slothful in business. Amen. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient. Oh my God help us. Patient in tribulation. Amen. When trouble comes. Trials comes. Testing comes. Persecution comes. He says be patient. In tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Oh my God, this list, this list, this list. Amen. Bless them which persecute you. 
Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Amen. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And listen to this. Oh, I, oh help us, Jesus. If it be possible. And it is possible because the Bible says with God. And y'all know y'all say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Hello. Yes, if it be possible, yes. he says, as much as life and you live peaceably with all not some people, all, all men. Yeah. Dearly beloved, he says, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. And the Bible tells us also that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Amen. Because when we get mad, we get upset, we ready to do something crazy. Take your car and just run somebody over. Oh, help us, Jesus. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. And so we saw that a few weeks ago. I just want to remind you of these things because Paul continued the exhortation, amen, to the saints talking about the love, the importance of love in the unity of the spirit. And in Romans chapter 15, very quickly, just the first three verses, remember he talks about how we are to, amen, prefer one over the other, over ourselves rather, amen. And so he says, we then who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, the scruples of the weak, and not to please Hours is somebody ought to say it's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. Amen. Not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to what? Edification is lifting your brother, lifting your sister up. It's it's not about me. It's about me lifting up and edifying. That, now that goes against everything in our culture today. That goes against, I mean, you, I mean this, listen, again, this is something you have to do for yourself. In cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For he, Look what he says. For even Christ did not please himself. Remember what he said. Not my will. But as it is written, the reproaches, which is our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities, amen, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. It was all, amen, put on Jesus. Amen. So as the Apostle Paul now, amen, closes out this magnificent letter, amen, to the church, he sends greetings to a whole host of people. Y'all didn't know Paul had so many friends and relatives, did you? Did y'all take note of that when you was reading it? I know you were kind of, we were kind of struggling with pronouncing some of the names. Amen. But he has mentioned in this letter many who are kinsmen of his, of his and all kinds of people who work with him to help him in the ministry. Amen. In the service of God. And by the way, I will say this. When I was looking through this and reading through this, it reminded me how that we ought to be thankful and grateful to those who have gone before us. We are standing on the shoulders of many. Amen. And God uses people and Paul makes, um, I mean, he makes, he takes the opportunity, let me put it that way, to commend all of the people of God who have been instrumental and who were instrumental in the ministry, in the work of the church. Amen. I'm convinced that without their 
amen, valiant laboring without their, amen, sacrificing uh, of their service to the Lord, the church of Jesus Christ, would have been deficient, amen, in growth and expansion to where it is today. We are here, we are where we are today because of the sacrifices, of, especially of those in the early church, amen, who were persecuted, amen, and many, many of them were chased out of their homes, Amen. Forced to relocate. Amen. Just because they, amen, named the name of Jesus Christ. Many of them were burned at the stake, thrown to the lions. Amen. Amen. But they would not recant. Amen. And they, amen, uh, 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 left for us, amen, a legacy. And so Paul again addresses many of these saints who, under duress and under Amen. Persecution from those who disagreed with, of course, and particularly the Jews who were striving against the church. Amen. At that time, he, amen, commends all of these people for their great labor and sacrifice. Amen. In the Lord. But before he, amen, ends this letter, amen, he takes the opportunity to issue one final plea. Amen. It's kind of, it's kind of strange. It's, He's, he's naming all of these people. He's, he's given, I mean, just a whole laundry list of folk. Amen. And, 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 but he gets to the end, and before he closes out the letter, he said, wait a minute, you know what? It, it, it's almost like he said, wait a minute. You know, he had like, like a, y'all you, remember, many of y'all seen Columbo? This is not for your, your young people. <laughs> Old Detective Columbo. Who, who, who will be on the way out the door. Yeah. And I, sometimes he leave out the door. And then he come and say, oh, oh, and now one, more, one more thing, one more thing. This is, this is kind of like a one more, oh, one, one, more, one more thing. One more thing. And by the way, he said, this is urgent. It's not as though he had forgotten it. But he wanted them to be sure to understand what they would be facing. Amen. And this is urgent. This is urgent. This is urgent. Look at Romans 16, verses 17 and 18. As he closes out this, before he closes this letter out, he said, I got one more thing I got to tell you. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. Well, you're talking about giving somebody the, the hand? You're talking about covering your ears? Walking away? I urge you, brethren, Note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary, that's the key, is contrary to the doctrine which you learned. And when you note them, he says, avoid them. For those who, listen to what he says, these kind of people, those who are such, they do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the simple. This is urgent, y'all. You got smooth talking flatterers. They don't have their hands to the plow. They're not working. Amen. But they are full of flattery. They are full of guile. With their talking. With their mouth. They labor only with their lips. You know, lip service people. Kind of like politicians. Yeah, I said it. I sure did. Talk, 
Talk, talk, talk, talk, talk, talk. Good talk. Smooth talk. Amen. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that for you. They labor only with their lips. Just like the religious leaders that Jesus warned his disciples about. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. What was he talking about? The doctrine, he says, of the Pharisees. Look what he says, by the way. Turn to Matthew 23 very quickly. Because Jesus warned his disciples about this. These are the kind of people, again, they, they even honor the Lord with their lips. The Bible says, but their heart is far from him. They're not, they're not about the service of the Lord. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, you that will be great among, amen, the people of God, let you be the servants. You're to be the servants. Amen. And so these would bind all kinds of heavy, amen, burdens on the shoulders of other people. But the Bible says, Jesus told them, they will not lift one finger. Because you know why? Lip, 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 talk, 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 talk. Flatter, 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 flatter. That's who they are. A lot of lip service, but their hands are not to the plow. Look what Jesus said. These are the words of Jesus. Matthew 23, verse number one, Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples. He said, the scribes and the Pharisees Sit in Moses' seat. Now, what is he talking about? They're the ones who are telling you what you ought to be doing. They have taken the seat of Moses as the ones who are, amen, the mouthpieces, as it were, of God. Amen. Therefore, whatever they tell you, he says, to observe, that observe and do. He was talking about according to the law. But do, listen what he says, but do not do according to their works for they say but they don't do it they talk a good game as it is as it were they talk it they talk it but they don't walk it Paul wrote about this lady said in, 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 in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient amen for they say but they don't do. Oh, they have you doing it. They have you doing all the heavy lifting. You doing all the work. Amen. But what do they do? Nothing. Listen what Je these are the words of Jesus. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves, Jesus said, will not move them with one of their fingers. They won't lift a finger. Amen. They won't lift a finger. You know why? Because they talk, 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 talk. Flatter, 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 flatter. Chatter, 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 chatter. And tell you, tell you and put it all on you. Amen. But not one finger will they lift. Jesus says, but all their works, listen what Jesus says, everything that they do is about being seen. Mm, 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 mm. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garment. This was the, you know, this is like wearing the robes, the collar, you know, the regalia, you know, all your, you know, your, all your stripes and all of your, you know, they had the, they had the all just dressed up and walking and strutting in public. So people can say, oh, it's a priest. Oh, an apostle. Oh, a bishop. Oh. They love, look, I'm telling you what Jesus said. They love the best place at the feast. They ain't gonna sit, they ain't gonna sit on the back in the back corner. Oh no. They gotta sit where everybody can see them. They gotta sit in the high seats. In the high chair. <laughs> like a baby sitting in the high chair. So they can be seen. They love the best places at feasts. 
the best seats in the synagogue. So when they go to church, it, platinum roll. Yeah, the churches got platinum and gold. Y'all didn't know that? Platinum gold six sections. Platinum people, the gold people, the silver people, the bronze, and some of y'all poor people are sitting in the nickel copper section. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And James said we are not to have respect to persons. You see somebody come in the church and he's all a little ragged and not dressed a little shoddy, and you tell him, "Go, you 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 sit back there, sit over there somewhere, back back over there." That, 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 you see that last chair back there in the corner? You go back there. But then somebody comes in dressed to the to the nines with you know and, and uh, you know with designer this and and and, and shiny polished shoes. There's nothing wrong with that. When they come in, you say, "Oh, hey, you, hey, right here." Look like you belong over here. Amen. No respect to persons. They love to sit in the best seats. The Bible says in the synagogues. And then when they're in the Senate, when they're in the marketplace, when they're outside, they love for the men to greet them. Rabbi. Rabbi. Don't now you can't, you know, a lot of people get offended. If you miss their title, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. A lot of people get offended if you miss their title. It's a doctor apostle. Now you missed a doctor. It's doctor apostle. I'm sorry, Bishop. I've been elevated. It's doctor apostle. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, sir. This is this is a, this is this is in your Bible, and you see it, you know it. I'm not making this stuff up. They love this. This is what they're all about. But guess what? They all about themselves. It's all about them. Titus one and ten. I'm just a couple of verses there. You don't have to turn. Paul's. Uh, reiterated this when he wrote to Titus he said there are many unruly and vain talkers you see just talkers and deceivers especially those of the circumcision this is what he whose mouths must be stopped they subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not listen to what he says for the sake of filthy lucre that's money and they all, it's all about the money for most of them. It's all about getting your money. And it's not, no, no, it's getting your money. <laughs> These vain talkers and deceivers are all about fattening their fortunes and feeding their big bellies. Yeah, I said it, feeding their big bellies. That's what the Bible said. Their belly. Didn't the Bible say, your Bible said belly? I said big belly. Bible says belly, because that's what they're doing. You keep feeding your belly, what's going to happen? It, it, it will expand. It will. That's what G, this is what the Bible said they're all about, feeding their bellies, right? And this is what they're all about. They talk a good game, but they will not lift Jesus said, one finger. And they do it at your expense. Putting you in poverty and misery. Because they have no conscience about, they don't have any conscience about doing it either. And so this is urgent. The Apostle Paul, before he closes out this letter, he said, this is urgent. You, you, got to, you got to take note of these kind of people. Amen. Beware of these vipers who are slithering into the sanctuary, making merchandise of gullible people, simple minded folk who lack the discernment to know a wolf dressed up in sheep clothing. This is urgent, y'all. So you got to watch out for these 
slippery servants of that old serpent, Satan. That's who they are. They are slippery servants of the devil. And they have silver tongues just like their father. Jesus said, you do the deeds of your father. And he told them, he told them, he told them religious hypocrites and all them folk. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the deeds of your father you will do. Amen. So you got to be aware of these old slippery silver tongue. Amen. Slick trickery. Amen. Uh, uh, vipers who slither their way into the churches. Amen. And, and, and they deceive the hearts of the simple minded. Creepers. Amen. That's who they are. Creepers. The Bible called them creepers. Y'all read that in your Bible? Now the Bible doesn't use the word creepers, but the Bible said they crept in. They crept in while people were asleep. They crept in. Creepers. They have infiltrated their way into the church. And many of them came by way of seminaries. Bible schools. And they went there just to learn how. Oh yeah. They wanted to learn all the religious Rituals, the traditions, but they are wolves in sheep clothing. Now, 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 this is what Paul is saying. Noting them and avoiding them, your responsibility. It's your responsibility. First and foremost, let me give you just a few things I'm almost done. This will help you. Know, first of all, you need to know the shepherd. Now, the shepherd I'm talking about is Jesus Christ, the chief shepherd. If you don't know him, I mean, you'll fall, you'll fall for any old slick talker that comes along. But when you know Jesus, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and uh. Hello, somebody reads the Bible here, John chapter 10. My sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. They will flee from him because he is not the shepherd. So when he comes with his slick, slippery talk, you say, wait a minute. No. 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 Number two, you need to know the truth. Oh, yeah. Truth from error. That's one of the biggest problems we have in the church today. People not being able to discern truth from error. Amen. And the reason, the primary reason for that is because we don't read the word. The word of God is there. Amen. It's, 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 we got it. We got it. We got more. We got, man, we got more, way more access. I have so... You know, listen, listen, listen. I, I, mean, I mean, even from I mean, many decades now, I mean, this time is just rolling, isn't it? When, I was, when the Lord first saved me, I mean, I remember when Bibles were very expensive. I mean, a good study Bible was, 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 was very expensive. Not, not that they're cheap, cheap now, but now in our advanced age of technology, hey amen, we have Bible apps. Of all kinds. Amen. And they will read the word to you. You don't. Listen. You can be a lazy non-reader. And let the Bible. It will be. I mean. Just, there's nothing wrong. I'm not. 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 not taking on. Nothing. Some of us are not readers. Amen. I'm not. I'm not. If it's. I'm not. A just. Some people just read anything. I'm not. Well. I'm not one of those. It's got to be interesting to me. If it's not interesting to me, I'm 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 out. I, if I'm tired already, especially, I won't even try it. Amen. But we have the the word of God. This is really we have in our day. We really have no excuse to not for not knowing the word of God. 
Amen. And so we take the word of God. The Bible says hide it in our hearts. Everything that Jesus used against that old serpent in the wilderness while he was hungry. After fasting for 40 days. Everything that Jesus used was the word of God. You want to defeat the devil? The word of God. You want to know the difference between truth and error? The word of God. You want to know when a charlatan is coming to carry you away? The pot piper coming to take you down the path of destruction? The word of God. The word. Amen. And then the Bible tells us wisdom. To get wisdom. Now if you lack wisdom, what does he say? Ask. Just ask. Just ask. Lord, I need wisdom concerning this. And of all thy getting, he says, get under. Get understanding. And then God will give you also discernment. I mean, we need, the people of God, we need discernment. Amen. Just because somebody coming and then they start prophesying and, 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 you know, get you all worked up in the spirit, so to speak, and uh, telling you what you want to hear. God told me. And they say it in such a spiritual way. God. God told me to tell you. God. See, I could do that kind of stuff if I wanted to. Amen. I could do that kind of stuff if I wanted to. I could, I could, I could do that. Amen. I, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into that. Amen. I'm not, I'm not into trying to, you know, just uh, uh, first, first and foremost, entertain people. Amen. I'm not here to entertain anybody. Amen. There's plenty of entertainment out there. Amen. And be weary, be very weary of that. Amen. But get discernment and God by the Holy Spirit in you will help you to discern. Amen. God will give you the ability to discern. You got to know good from evil. Right from wrong, yeah. up from down, yeah. in from out, yeah. heaven from hell, yeah. devils from righteous folk. You got to know it. Yeah. Peter and them had that discernment. There was a man, by, I'm almost done, just came to me, by the name of Simon, book of Acts. Amen. Philip, the Bible tells us, went down to Samaria preaching the gospel. Man, People were being delivered. Amen. Devils were being cast out. Amen. The Bible said there was great joy in that city. And there was a man there by the name of Simon who the Bible says had for a long time bewitched the people. Because he had, amen, deceived them into himself being the great power of God. Simon, I'm the great power of God. And so the Bible says when they heard the preaching of Philip, amen, and believed, many of them were baptized. Amen. And the Bible says Simon came also to church, as it were. And the Bible says he believed and he was baptized. Let me tell you something. Everybody that's baptized ain't saved. Everybody that gets baptized ain't for real. This is why you have to have discernment. And so the Bible says when the apostles heard, amen, that the people of Samaria had received the word of the Lord, Peter and John went down there to them. Amen. The Bible says they had not yet received the Holy Ghost. And so they went to pray for them. And the Bible says when they got there, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says when they laid their hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of hands of the apostles that the Holy Ghost was given, he said, oh, my God. Whoa, I ain't got no tricks like this in my bag. Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, they may receive the Holy Ghost. You know what Peter said? He didn't say how much you got. No, no, no. Peter had discernment. Yes, sir. And Peter said to Simon, I, 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 I. Sir, <laughs> you, 
you, you, you, you, you, you, you don't get, you don't understand what this is all about. First and foremost, the gift of God cannot be purchased with money. You better get that. This is a gift. It cannot be purchased with money. The power is not of men. It's not of us. Don't look so earnestly on us. Amen. You remember what the Bible says about that? Don't look so earnestly on us. Peter had already told the folk when they healed the lame man. Don't look at us. This is not mine. And even if it was mine to give, you ought not. Get, you don't give it. Away. Oh my God! You can't sell this. A charlatan will, though. Oh yeah, a smooth talker will. He said, "No, no, no." I perceive. Listen, to what Peter says. I perceive that you are in a gall of bitterness. You are. In, you are. In, you are. You are of the devil. Basically, is what he was telling him. You are bound up in iniquity, and he told him to repent. You need to repent. A lot of people get baptized. They haven't repented, though. Oh, help us, Jesus. Amen. We need discernment. Amen. The apostles, amen, they had that kind of discernment. Amen. To know that this, this guy, even though he had come, even though he was following Philip, the Bible says he was following Philip. Amen. And he got baptized. But his heart wasn't right. Peter said, your heart ain't right, man. You got to repent. Amen. Discernment. And number seven, final thing we need. Amen. We need to pray. Got to pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray always. Pray without fainting. Amen. Prayer helps your spiritual walk, your discernment, your wisdom, all of that. And brings the word of God to your remembrance. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things we don't. I forget about it when I'm praying. And the Lord will bring it to my. Oh thank you Jesus. This is urgent y'all. And before Paul closed out this letter. He said listen, 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 listen. Please. You got to know these folks. That are going to be coming. These folks that are going to be in your midst. These folks that are going to slip and slide. And creep into the church. So I'm urging you. I'm urging you, take note of those who would cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, the word of God that you have learned and you need to avoid them. You need to avoid them because listen to what he says again. They do not serve Jesus Christ, but their own belly. It's all about them. And they have smooth words and they have flattering speech and they deceive the hearts of the simple. Avoid them. Avoid them. Jesus said this and I'm, almost, I'm done. I'm done. By their fruit you will know them. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit and a corrupt tree or bad tree cannot produce Good for it can't if the tree is bad, the tree the tree is rotten, the fruit ain't gonna be all good either. Listen, God is well able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence. He said, the Bible says, with exceeding joy. Amen. He that begun this good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. But it, it is our reasonable service nonetheless. To be able to note, to be able to discern a snake, a snake when we see a snake. Most of y'all know a snake when you see a snake, don't you? You don't say, oh, that's a big worm, man. That's a snake. It's a snake. You need to know a wolf that's dressed up in sheep's clothing. And avoid their flattering lips, their smooth talking. Because all they want to do is entice you to feed their own bellies. That's what the Bible says. This is urgent, y'all. This is urgent for the church. This is urgent for the church. Amen. And the apostle, just, he just did not leave, amen, this letter before he closed without 
making that one last appeal, amen, to the people of God, the urgency of being vigilant, of being sober, and understanding that your adversary, the devil, will go to any means, any means, Amen. He couldn't defeat the church. I've said it often. He couldn't defeat the church. That's what he started doing it, it initially trying to intimidate them into not preaching or teaching in the name of Jesus. And when he could not defeat them, what did he do? He infiltrated with his own ministers. Slippery, slick, sly, smooth talking serpents. That's who they are. Wolves and sheep's clothing. And Paul says, note them and avoid them. For they that are such do not serve Jesus, but their own bellies. Father, help us today. Help your people today everywhere. It's your church. It's your people. We are called by your name. Lord, we know we have an enemy, an adversary, who goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we know that you are faithful and you are able to keep us through the fire, through the storms, through the tests, through the tribulations, and even when the enemy creeps in, when the enemy would come in like a flood. We know that your spirit will lift up a standard and you will keep us in all of our ways, lest we dash our foot against the stone. God, be glorified in your church. Be glorified in your people. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you in Jesus' name, amen. I feel like.